You're listening to the Swap Society Podcast, and I'm your host, Nicole Robertson. I interview thought leaders and change makers who are working to create a more sustainable and equitable world through fashion, art, and activism. Join us for a dose of climate optimism as we envision a brighter future. Hey everyone, welcome to the Swap Society podcast. Today, I'm so excited to be chatting with Kate McGuire. She's a re-fashion designer and a sustainable fashion advocate. Welcome to the show, Kate. Very lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. So where are you talking to us from today and where are you from originally? I am in New York today. I'm going to put my glasses on, actually. I'm in New York, at, but I am, as you can hear, I'm a Brit. And I moved here two years ago in the middle of COVID. And I couldn't be more happy to be here, I have to say. Amazing. What brought you to New York? I'm married to an American who I kept trapped in London for 11 years. But he was like, <laughs> hi. And I, I'm so glad. I feel like I was really... This New York is made for me or the other way around. I love being here. Wonderful. So I have to confess, I'm fangirling a little bit. I love your work so much. I've been following you for quite a while. I love seeing how you refashion and transform pieces of clothing, vintage pieces of clothing and make them modern and make them new. Uh, but for anyone who's listening and they're wondering, well, what is a refashion designer? Um, tell us a little bit about that and what that means to you. What is a refashion designer? It's a good question. A fashion designer, if we start with that, is someone who creates a garment using essentially new fabric. And a refashion designer is somebody who takes something already in existence, generally clothing, it could be a textile, and refashions it. So it just means that the source is already in existence. We're not using anything new. So how did you get into this line of work? What drew you, I guess, to fashion initially? Were, and, and perhaps you were a more traditional fashion designer before, or has this always been your approach? I'd, I'd love to learn about your journey. It's an unusual journey, and it did not start in fashion, although my heart's always been there. I actually had a career in the corporate world before I started doing this. And really, Converted Closet was born on Instagram. Everything's burgeoned off of that. But I had a career in the city in London, and I was a headhunter recruiting heads of investor relations for corporate, so FTSE 100s, to helping finance directors to find their people. And I did that for many years. I had my son, who's now 10, and when he was small, I figured that I'm just not one of those people who can just sit around. And I really, at that time, didn't understand about and connected the dots between what I do and what the impact of fashion was having on the planet. And so I started doing it for fun, which I think is a really important part of my story. And when I realized that actually it, it's a major solution, I think, to helping reduce environmental impact, I just, I had no choice but to really make it my life's mission to celebrate this, get more people doing it and raise awareness through the fun of it. How did you learn to sew? Did you grow up sewing? Is that something that you've learned later in life? So I studied, we had needlework at school and I actually went on to do a higher qualification in it before university, but it stopped there. And so I can sew and I can make a toile and I really understand the construction of clothes, but I'm not sewing all my pieces. There is no way I would have time to do that. So I have an army of people who do it all for me. And I would definitely advocate to people as well to get somebody who really knows what they're doing to convert clothes for you. Don't think I've got to learn to sew so I can do this myself. I remember Ursula de Castro from Fashion Revolution once said, you know, that's a surefire way to get things into landfill. You start messing around <laughs> and you don't know what you're doing. So actually, you know, the message really for me is, is buy something at a discount, pre-owned, thrifted, 
and invest some of that money, you won't even need all of it, into somebody in your local community who can do it for you and co-create with them. You'll, you'll get a great job and it's just a win all around. If you want to sew, obviously brilliant, but don't think it's all about picking up a needle. It's not. It's more refashioning. Mm -hmm. I love that. I have to confess, I do not sew. I do know how to knit and crochet, but I've never used a sewing machine. Um, but I love, I love working with tailors, whether it's to uh, just bring something in or fix a hem or transform something. I've had the fortune of working with some refashion designers here in Los Angeles, um, you know, that have taken some vintage pieces and transformed them. And now I love them even more. And they're just these coveted pieces in my closet. Uh, so I love that. I love also, it gives me so much hope for this movement just to hear you say look i'm not a fashion designer by trade i'm not even that great of a seamstress I, not to put you down in any way but i mean just you know but i just never do half of the things that i'm i'm designing um you know and then it's like oh so it, i feel like that's so empowering to say oh yeah just don't be afraid to be creative and then take your idea to someone and and have them execute it. Do you have to sketch things out for people that, you know, are you kind of doing sketches or are you just kind of holding the garment up and saying, this is my vision? How do you how do you work with your team? That's a good question. And it's all about sketching. It didn't used to be. When I was in London, I had a dressmaker who I worked very closely with and it was kind of a, a level of simpatico that, you know, we just, she would be able to read my mind. And bizarrely, the clothes tell you what they want you to be. And part of the fun at that point was really just moving things around and seeing, because you'd get to a point where suddenly you're looking in the mirror and we would both go, whoa, that's it right there. But as I'm creating more sophisticated pieces, I found that sketching is invaluable. And I use Procreate on the iPad, which I taught myself, very easy. And I think it's the same as an interior designer, right, with a mood board. It's quite difficult to, it's almost, it's actually impossible. I would say to anyone, don't try and visualize it. Just put it down on paper, even in blocks of colors, how, it, however basic it is, it doesn't matter. But try and mock it up visually for yourself because you'll be able to see just what the overall image of the garment looks like when it's on paper and it, you'll get closer to where you want to get to. Also, when you're communicating with a dressmaker, even I use the person around the corner in the dry cleaners sometimes, it's much easier to communicate a vision if you have a a practical a piece of paper to to dialogue around mm -hmm. that's so cool so you're also a sustainable fashion advocate and I'm wondering if there was a certain aha moment for you where you just realized what was going on in fashion or or if it was just something that happened more gradually it it was actually somebody suggesting to me that what I was doing was sustainable. And at really at the time, I just thought that sounds so boring and so unfashioned. I'm going to slightly ignore it because I don't think I want to do that. And when I started really digging into it, 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 it just became more and more interesting to me. So I'm not somebody who who's always been, you know, a particularly eco person. And I just recycled like everybody else did because I was told to, and I knew it was the right thing to do. I never felt touched by, you know, my actions or, I don't know, I really didn't feel that connected to the planet. I couldn't really feel it. And then when I watched The True Cost, it was then that that really had an aha moment. And I ended up bizarrely transcribing the whole film on a flight from London to New York. And I cried all the way through. It's the second time I'd watched it. And I just thought, my, you know, something's happening to me here. <laughs> this is really bizarre. And I think it was partly because I could feel, I felt excited about what I was onto. It was like, oh my God, that means what I'm actually doing is really meaningful. Like this could actually help the planet in a big way and empower people and 
oh my God, you know, and I know there are the, the solutions are so few and far between, you know, we're really in a much more dire situation than people realize. And I studied this, I had to, I ended up going to college to figure it all out because, you know, whatever, you never know what you're reading. And, um, and when I really understand, understood what was going on, it was just like, it, it's almost, it's almost nonsensical. If you were to explain what we're actually doing to an alien who just arrived on the planet in terms of the amount of clothes that we produce, you know, 150 billion a year, and there are 8 billion, billion of us. And, you know, it's like, and, and, and it's decimating the planet as we go. What, what on earth are we doing? And um, yeah, so when I really connected with that and thought about it, it's just, you know, I had that epiphany and I felt like this, this passion to do it. And now I really, I think when I see images of, of the planet from space, you know, those sort of satellite pictures, I just, I feel really humbled. And I, I think I can just, I, I feel, I feel everything a lot more now. And probably because I feel like I'm making a contribution towards it. It's almost like, you know, when you're not really doing anything about it, you sort of just don't want to look. Mm -hmm. That could be it. But anyone can get in anywhere. Like, I don't think this is about having to feel, uh, you know, a deep connection with the planet and at all. It's not about that. It's just doing whatever you can, but recognizing that we all need to be doing something. and We all have power to do something mm -hmm. about it. Absolutely. I think that for me personally, you know, I've always loved clothing and fashion as a means of self-expression and I love variety. I'm always changing up what I'm wearing. And for me, my style is more of a mood than like, oh, I'm, I fit in this certain box. And so I think that when I did learn how polluting the fashion industry was. That was the first thing that I learned about. And then eventually also, as I started digging deeper, learned about all of the human rights abuses as well within the industry. I just felt like I just really didn't want to be a part of that system anymore, but I still wanted to have fun with my wardrobe. And so that's what led me to swapping in particular, and then eventually to launch Swap Society because it's like, okay, well, I, I still want the fun part. I just don't want to harm the planet or other humans in the process. And so there are things that we can do like refashioning vintage or old clothes in our closet, swapping, thrifting, um, you know, mending our clothes and keeping them, you know, wearing them longer, things that are actually pretty easy and not too expensive to do either, as opposed to just funneling so much of our money into this industry that's really just mostly about making money. Although, and maybe you feel conflicted about this as well, you know, sometimes I watch those fashion shows, those reality shows where there are these young budding designers and they're being creative with these challenges and they're making all of these cool things. Or you look at the runway and these kind of avant-garde pieces and it's so much fun to see what they're doing. And I love that creativity, but I have so many mixed feelings about the the behind the scenes, you know, how the fabric is sourced, who's sewing the clothes, you know, what is the impact of all of this? How, how do you feel? How does that impact you personally? I, I really relate to what you're saying. And I think it's it's great. And I don't like the word should, but I think <laughs> it's it's one of those things that we really should be thinking about um, because there is an impact to everything when it comes to creating new fashion. I was listening to an interview with Arizona Muse earlier on talking about the soil. And she was saying, you know, our clothes, our farmers are growing our clothes effectively. And we just don't, I, I find it difficult to even think like that. You know, we're just so used to thinking, I go into a shop and there it is. I'm not thinking about any of the backstory. I'm not thinking about the supply chain or the people who made it or how it came to be. And I'm certainly not thinking about the scenario where it doesn't get sold and then it gets taken somewhere and incinerated and then the carbon goes, I'm not thinking about that. 
because that's really unsavory and it's not beautiful. It's like the diametric opposite to what fashion is all about. But that is the reality of it. And when I look at those shows, I I feel slightly, I feel uncomfortable, I'm not going to lie, I feel uncomfortable. It feels totally unnecessary and actually I think wrong to, to watch people grabbing new rolls of fabric, making new things when there are trillions and trillions of clothes already in existence that are halfway there. <laughs> you know, the fabric in, in vintage clothes is so phenomenal. And, you know, even I've, I've just, I'm looking right now about even fast fashion. I quite often collate numerous pieces of fast fashion in the same style and and deconstruct them and make something else you know and we don't need huge rolls of new fabric and i actually think converting clothes and obviously i would say this because i do this but genuinely is more exciting because you're co-creating with the original designer of the piece so you can take the elements of it that you like and build on them and and most of the things that i've made I, I would never have dreamt up if you'd have given me a roll of fabric and a piece of paper and a pencil, not in a million years, but I look at them and I'm, I'm awed by them. And I just think, whoa, I, but I, it's not, you know, to me, that's not, I'm, it's not me. I'm not taking the credit for it. I co-created it with someone else. And it feels like a really rich, rewarding experience. And then you, afterwards you look and you think, God, that was zero impact. I've created that entire new piece of fashion completely unique using nothing new from the earth and i remember looking at lady gaga you know i think it was at, at, in the at the inauguration maybe she wore that big red dress do you remember mm -hmm. and all i could think of was i could have made that from a curtain i could <laughs> and you would never know the difference ever ever we could have we could just do a rerun of that in my dress for Gaga using it. You'd and it was a bit frustrating. I quite often feel because I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if we could get these people, these celebrities wearing mind blowing fashion and then we all go, oh, it's so fabulous. Wow, that's amazing. And then they go, yeah, it was made out of a curtain. Yeah, this was made using nothing new. There, there's this, I'm interested in that gap. And it's something that I'm working on to close. Well, and speaking of that, I know that you have done some of the costuming, so to speak, for the Sex and the City reboot for Sarah Jessica Parker. Talk to us about that. Well, that was terrific fun. I mean, she's just such an example of, of really how to, obviously how to wear it. She can, she can wear anything. She can pull it all off but really how to celebrate it and champion it. And I just love the fact that she's been doing it since the beginning of Sex and the City. And so to be part of that was such an honor. Before I knew I was gonna get as involved as I, as I have been, I watched the whole series again from scratch, binge watched it, can you imagine? And <laughs> how many and seasons I, is that? <laughs> well, I think what, seven, I wanna, I said, I can't remember, oh, maybe more. I can't, literally, it was just like one big I think, week of my life. I, I did spend a lot of time watching it because there were a lot of hours. It was really interesting to watch it from a costume perspective, actually, because her style evolved a lot throughout that series. And then it's evolved again, obviously, as she's now grown up. And I think that I've really grown up with her. And that was what I think is interesting about my pieces for Molly and Danny in the costume department there is that I I've sort of I have a grown-up carries wardrobe where I'm taking pieces of vintage but I'm making them modern and sophisticated and wearable and sort of elevating them so where she might wear something and I do know that she has worn something on set that has literally fallen apart as she's been walking around <laughs> You know, now she's less likely to do that. <laughs> she wants something that's a bit more put together. And and so 
that, I mean, can you imagine? It's just absolutely incredible. It's almost unreal to me. And I'm the series is coming out, I think, in September. And I am just, I was talking to a friend the other day, we're just going to have to, she's going to fly over from London and we will watch the series together because we don't know what's going to come when. I just, I've given them quite a lot of pieces that I know they've used. But how funny to be sitting there watching Carrie and then suddenly she's going to pop up in my like crazy coat or something. It's, like, it's just hilarious. A dream, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's so cool. Oh, that's so exciting. And I think that the fact that that's happening in such a prominent show that's so fashion based, right? I mean, let's face it, the fashion is a massive part of that whole show. Um, I, I just I think it's it gives me a lot of hope and optimism <laughs> about the future. I think that there are a lot of stylists that I've met that are definitely thinking in this direction. Um, and so I, I feel like it's so great to see that. And it's just yeah, it's, I think it's really exciting. Well, my my focus now is couture. Because I'm very conscious that changes in fashion happen from the top down. You know, you can never be TJ Maxx and then reinvent yourself as Vuitton. So it has to come from the top. And I'm hearing uh, on the grapevine as well that there's actually, there's a lack of great pieces floating around at the top that are truly sustainable. I mean, we know about all the greenwashing and there's a lot of upcycling, I think actually more using dead stock, mm -hmm. actually upcycling old clothes. Mm -hmm. But there's definitely more and more, which is absolutely fantastic. What I'd like to do is go one step further and use something unknown. You know, I would like to put a celebrity on uh, at the Met Gala. Karl Lagerfeld's coming up. Well, what if there was something really fun that we could do with some, you know, some sort of fast fashion, maybe not the Met Gala, but well, maybe, but whatever. God, <laughs> my secrets here on your podcast. But I just think that that there's some really interesting, this is a great platform to really do something that's just edgy and, and unexpected. I love the idea of putting a celebrity in, in something from eBay. And, and, and I think I do, I feel like, you know, I am an alien <laughs> officially. And it's bizarre because I feel that I probably at this stage in my life as well, but I feel like I have a bit of a license to, to do that. You know, I, I, I'm very clear about what my vision is and what I like, and I really don't care what anybody, you know, I, I mean, I love it when people love it, but I don't mind at all if people don't like what I make. So that's quite liberating. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, it, I'd like to use that and lend that attitude to somebody who really wants to champion upcycling on a carpet like that and push them out there and something they feel really good at and break a few records, get a few eyebrows being raised. I find that really fun, that thought. Well, and I love that you are focusing on couture because upcycling takes a lot of effort, right? It's not this mass production formula and so it's just so well suited to to what you're doing you've mentioned fast fashion a couple of times so i want to talk about fast fashion a little bit um you know we at swap society we accept all brands even clothes missing the tags as long as they're in good condition or if they have an imperfection and it's minor you know we we try to just make sure that the condition quality is there but if it's something someone could do a visible mend or replace a button or something simple um, sometimes within the sustainable fashion world, we do get a little heat uh, for having fast fashion on the site, or some people say, oh, well, I don't want to wear fast fashion. And on the one hand, I think absolutely we should not be purchasing brand new fast fashion, but it exists already. <laughs> We've already made this clothing. What a shame to throw it to landfill at this point. We should absolutely be using it. So I love hearing uh, that you also work with some fast fashion pieces. And I'd just love to hear your perspective on that as well. I, I think completely, I'm a hundred percent with you. I think that would be, that would be bonkers. Like fabric is fabric. 
who cares what kind of fashion it is or where it came from? If you're not going to wear it, it's going to go into landfill and it's going to pollute the environment. So do you really care whether Zara made it or H&M made it or Stella McCartney? Wear it. We have to extend the life cycle of every piece of clothing that we possibly can. And so I can't see an argument that would support the not the not rewearing of of fast fashion. It's always kind of boggled my mind a little bit as well. Is secondhand fast fashion sustainable? There were a lot of these types of posts and articles and it's just like, you know, me shouting to the world, yes, yes, it is sustainable, wear it. They don't understand what that, they don't understand what sustainable means then. Really, do they? That's as simple as that. Because that's yeah. a that's nonsense argument. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so you can send them to me if you want me to clarify that for them. Well, and you mentioned Ursula earlier, and you know, I heard her in an interview once talking about this very subject because one of the things that people say is that, well, you know, it's not made as well. You know, fast fashion isn't well made, it's not going to last, it's going to fall apart, it's polluting the secondhand stream, it's polluting our thrift shops with these poorly made garments. Um, but I loved the way that Ursula framed it once, and she said that it may be more simply made, but that doesn't mean that it's not valuable and that we shouldn't wear it. And and I loved that reframing of of that perspective, you know, that topic, because it was like, yeah, it's it is more simply made because it's made a lot faster. <laughs> Exactly. But some fast fashion can last for ages. Yeah. I mean, how many times do you hear someone say, oh, God, I've, I've had this as Zara. I've had this for like 15 years. I wear it all the time. I, I think it's piece by piece. I don't think you can generalize. And I do think actually that that fashion companies have had to really produce things in a way that does stand up, you know, fast mm -hmm. fashion or not, because... Otherwise, they just they'll they'll stop being sold. I think there's a competition within the fast fashion arena. So, and I think also you know things like machines and finishings. It's there's so much tech there now that means that they can do things fast and well. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't. It's really interesting you said this because I've never thought about it. But I don't think I've ever had anything fast fashion. I bought fast fashion, of course. That's actually fallen apart. I don't think I actually have ever had a piece of clothing fall apart on me. Mm. And probably, you know, who's wearing those pieces enough that they wear out? I would, not many of us listening. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> well, I mean, what it's, I don't know, what is, I hear some of these crazy stats sometimes. What is it like one in three people throw out something after wearing it once or, you know, if it's on the Instagram, you know, they won't rewear it or all of these things where it's like, we're hardly wearing our clothes to your point. So yeah, a lot of those fast fashion items that are secondhand maybe haven't even been worn very much. You oh know. yeah, many of them, many, many, many. So now I'd really like to talk about fabric because, you know, obviously a lot of fast fashion, but also a lot of you know, luxury brands use a lot of synthetic materials. Um, and I'm wondering what your feeling is about that. Do you work with all fabrics? Do you try to find more natural materials for your work? Well, it's interesting because you, you I've heard quite a lot of people talking about, oh, I always use natural fibers or whatever, but you know, Cotton, non-organic cotton is hugely polluting, right? That's terribly polluting the way that they, they make it. So it's very nice to wear it. But if you're talking about how things are made, then that's polluting. It, it, it's biodegradable and it can be recycled. But most fabric is cotton poly mix, which cannot be recycled. And I think it would be interesting if people chose based on their understanding of what actually happens at the end of the life cycle right and i think that's that's what you're talking about that so i have to say that i prefer natural fabrics and when i'm thinking about couture 
I'm always thinking, would Tom Ford do this? Would Balenciaga do this? You know, unless I'm deliberately doing something comprised of fast fashion. And it has to be, to be on a red carpet, it has to be equal to those, those. otherwise we're just going to give upcycling a bad name. So I'm either going to do this perfectly or I'm not. Oh, mm. it, a lot of room for error there. So I really do look for silk. And when I'm, I buy quite a lot of things from Etsy and on eBay, the first thing I find myself going to is composition. Even when I'm on the real real, I'm com- I find myself doing that a lot. I don't know if other people do too. You straight. And I can also then judge whether it's a good price or not. And mm-hmm. actually I was on the real real yesterday buying some things that I'm going to combine for a, a couture piece. And the prices were eye-watering and I was like, well that must be silk. I I mean I'm I was looking at a Carolina Herrera piece and it was mm-hmm. beautiful. And I thought, oh, that must be silk. It's a fantastic sort of scarlet piece with a bow. And it was polyester. And I was like, no way. I sort of felt a bit sad. I thought, you really that you really sold out there. <laughs> like you could have made that from silk. And it was would have been so nice to upcycle that. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend that money on something that's made from polyester and it sort of lost its lost its appeal for me now. Um <laughs> I sort of yeah. yeah. So the, the answer to that question is yes, I do prefer I, I prefer. Do you prefer natural fabrics? I do prefer natural fabrics and I have for a long time. Um and so I think that I do seek those out, but there are some pieces that I will wear that are not natural um you know sorry tool who doesn't love like a big frou-frou tool dress I'm crazy about that that's so I'm with you I don't want to I don't want people to think that I'm only into natural fabric I'm not because I think there are amazing qualities that synthetics have and they hold color incredibly well they have a structure there are things that synthetic fabrics can do that natural fabrics just can't so I think there's a lot of interest there and I'd much rather use something than not yeah I'd much mm-hmm. rather use something interesting that just needs new life than not use it because it's synthetic I wouldn't do that yeah. but do I prefer natural yes yeah and I think that there are so many amazing vintage pieces that are synthetic I mean we have had synthetic fabrics around for ages and so you know it's it's one of those things that it's it's even hard to to even shop vintage and only find natural fibers let alone well, modern I, you've got i this is i find this the older vintage synthetics i'm very happy with they're a much higher quality mm. synthetic like synthetic polyester vintage polyester I actually really like and I bought some really fantastic kind of sateen pieces and they've looked like silk in fact I've I've had conversations with people online selling them on Etsy do you think this is silk and they're like oh I think it's silk and I get it and I'm like so not silk but it looks <laughs> fabulous and I could never buy this quality of synthetic fabric now i'm all about this it's fantastic mm-hmm. i actually i made like a neon pink dress on instagram it was just like a sort of an, a piece with a big full skirt and i converted it into a, a short sort of trapeze shaped dress mm, i think i saw that one intense neon pink and i couldn't have got that from anything other than that it was very heavyweight it draped beautifully it was really interesting i couldn't buy that in the shop today because they don't make synthetic fabrics in that with that quality now so it's isn't that interesting in itself isn't it mm, that is very interesting yeah and i oh i love that color i'm i love bright colors i have to say that one thing about kind of swapping almost exclusively since about 2010 is that I have a lot more neutrals in my wardrobe than I ever did before. Um, but when I see something really bright and colorful that, you know, comes my way, I'm obsessed. Like I love, I love fuchsia. I used to have some really beautiful uh, Maria Pinto blouses. When I was a makeup artist, I used to do makeup for her shoots and um, I got some amazing pieces and, oh, she just had these 
beautiful pink silks that she was working with back then and ah oh, so beautiful but i love i love brights so it's so much fun to see color and i i hope that people start wearing more color again do you think from your perspective that that's happening do you or do you think we're kind of stuck in a neutral phase for a while there's been so much research recently and some brilliant books published on the power of color color without a shadow of a doubt affects my mood it, it can transform the way I feel. And I very much coming from a neutral palette. I, I remember in my twenties, you know, my, my mum and dad just used to be like, God, you know, you're like basically a goth. I only wore black <laughs> because of what I felt comfortable in. And I had some, you know, body dysmorphia and I was going up and down with my weight and black just felt safe. And I would like, I would concentrate on the makeup, but just an interesting textures and shapes. And that's really how I learned to get clever with converting because I just wanted to disguise my body and show myself in the way that I felt comfortable. I couldn't get it from the shops. It had to be tweaked, mm. but it was all about black. And actually it was really through converting clothes that I got into color. And now my sister still wears very neutrals. She's like, oh, what do you think? And I'm just like, oh my God. I opened her cupboard up when I went back to the UK and it's like greys and blacks. And I was thinking, God, you know, what about this and this? And I think there's a there's a comfort level that comes. People think you have to be confident to wear color, but I don't think so. I think you just have to start wearing it and see how it feels and just do it gradually, piece by piece, just wear a scarf and then just broaden it out. But it, it's so worth experimenting with because of the power it has on how you feel about yourself and other people. You know, if I'm looking at somebody around there and they're all colorful, I'm, it lights my day up as well, not just theirs. Oh, I love when I see someone out and about in bright colors, especially if it's like head to toe, I'm so jazzed by it and it's so exciting. So I feel that. <laughs> Okay, so I always love a good fashion love story. And I have to ask, do you have any favorite pieces in your closet? And what are they? What do you love about them? And oh, I know it's like asking if you have a favorite pet or child or relative or something. <laughs> I know. Thanks for that. Um, now they're all going to feel upset that I'm not. <laughs> but I think the, the piece that I'm in love with at the moment, which, as you said, is a moving feast is this, it's a quilt dress that I made and it's a postage stamp quilt, they call it, which means that every square, every patch is one inch by one inch. And they're all sewn together by hand that I, it's an antique American quilt. And I've cut it into a dress and I've played with the shape of the postage stamp. So it sort of has like a neckline and there was enough fabric to be able to make a hat. And so the edge of the hat is all following the postage stamps as well, shapes. And then I, a little bag and some cuffs and I wore, oh, it has a look of neck thing. <laughs> and I, I wore it out the other day and I just felt, I felt really well dressed and really fun, unbelievably comfortable. and. I get stopped a lot when I wear this particular dress by it's just sort of an interesting piece. Mm -hmm. And and I and people just l like looking at it, but I think these things deserve to be celebrated. So I would much rather have it worn and admired by many, many more people than sat on somebody's bed somewhere because all fabric disintegrates eventually. So we know that's not going to last forever. I say, let's just make the most of it and celebrate it. And so that's my absolute favorite piece at the moment. But that was a hard question. <laughs> I know, sorry. <laughs> okay, now, is there anything in particular inspiring you right now? I, you know, I think that I'm, I think I'm inspired by the thousands of people who are coming up with intelligent solutions to this crisis, actually. Uh, I'm particularly obsessed with women in tech 
who are using their expertise to find find ways. For example, I met someone the other day who is looking to uh, ways we can scale up upcycling because it is, you know, as you said at the beginning, it's one of those things that's difficult to scale, but there are ways. And I, I'm very inspired by those efforts. I really am. So it's, it's for me at the moment, it's, it, I'm inspired by people. I really am. Uh, and also the way that the fashion industry is, is changing. I'm, I love, I, I never even think I'm part of the fashion industry. I don't really want to be part of the fashion industry. It's, it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable to think that I am. I, I would like to be on this, in the sustainable fashion world where everybody's on the same side, looking for, for, for common ground and all trying to help each other. That, that I find very inspiring. And so, yeah, I think it's, it's just, it's people and the quest to do this. And, you know, the people who follow me inspire me. I get so many DMs, people like, okay, I'm, I'm going to wear this for my wedding. I'm thinking of doing this. What do you think? You know, I just, oh, I've just got this. I inherited this from my grandmother. I think I'm doing, I'm just like, oh my God, it's brilliant. And people sending me photos of things they've just done. There's this one person who follows me. I mean, I, I don't think that she could even sew before she started doing this, but she's dismantling sofas, like thing, like actual pieces of furniture, like a leather sofa. She sent me a skirt the other day, of an image of it that she'd made out of a gray sofa. I was just like, oh my God, this is so mad, but it, it worked, but she had so much fun doing it. She was like, oh my, you know, wow. I could, I could sense that she really felt alive from that process. And that inspired me. I don't care what it looks like. It's the energy that went into it was just phenomenal. That's so fun. I love that. Uh, yeah, it seems like more and more people are being creative with their clothes in this new way. And I, I think it's exciting. I think it's so much more exciting than looking just like everybody else <laughs> and wearing the same thing as everybody else. It's like if you're shopping vintage or you're upcycling or thrifting, swapping, the likelihood of walking into a room and having the same exact outfit as someone else is much smaller. And I think that's so much more exciting. Imagine if, if everyone on all the red carpets were wearing upside, unique upcycle pieces. I mean, how cool would that be? Especially if they'd all had personal input into what they were wearing. I mean, I think we'd be seeing some different things. People wearing different pieces than they're currently wearing. Mm -hmm. I find it so much more interesting. Honestly, I really would. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I know that you mentioned and we talked about sustainability and that, you know, you in the past, you didn't really think of yourself as sustainable you evolved into this place it sounds like you've done a lot of learning and you went to college and you know do you have climate anxiety and if so you know and and regardless really but like what's keeping you feeling optimistic about the future knowing what you know <laughs> well there are so many things that are keeping me <laughs> feeling optimistic i i mean i it's well, you just touched on one point just in your last at the end of your last question yourself. It, how how much creativity is being sparked by this movement? How much more adventurous are we getting? I, I think that we're actually being gifted. I think that we're being freed from a stigma of wearing old clothes because suddenly it's the right thing to do. That's making people less inclined to follow fashion, more inclined to actually feel how they want to present themselves. It's sort of opening the doors to many more styles because now we've got access to every season that's ever been and it really doesn't matter. <laughs> so I, I think that's terrifically exciting. It would be exciting whether it was the right thing to do for the planet or not. And I also think that that rolls into, you know, my a point about connecting with yourself so if you i i feel that we're all feeling that we need to connect more with our closets and if we do get involved and just upcycle something even just take a hem up so we make a long dress into a short dress 
the satisfaction that comes out of doing that is something that you never even knew you were missing. So I feel like there's potential for people to become more connected with themselves, have a more interesting relationship with themselves, discover things about themselves, explore their creativity, like themselves more because they want to do the right thing. You know, I, I just think there's so much potential upside there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just think it's all about unique, the unique. And and I, I think also from a kind of commercial perspective, we the landscape's changing. There are going to be a lot more new commercial opportunities coming out because we have to find new solutions to upcycle, et cetera, which means that, you know, there's going to be a whole load of new businesses forming, which I find really interesting. I think that it's it's going to be really exciting for small businesses because inevitably, as people start to vote with their feet and their fashion choices, these these big guys who a lot have got sort of monopoly over, you know, fashion like less expensive fashion will will be squeezed out because people will really want different things. So I I think that's interesting from a commercial perspective. I just I I I just feel completely excited about the future because I really do believe in human creativity and the power that we all have. And we might be standing at the bottom of Everest now or or a mountain of you know landfilled clothes, whatever analogy or metaphor you want to use. But we've never been able to not achieve you know as humanity we've basically staved off every crisis you know the industrial look look through history there's been huge crises and yet we've survived and i I just believe that the solutions will come i i'm really confident about it i think this is almost like it sounds a bit controversial but i i partly think this is about being human you know, what do we do as humans? We solve crises. And right now we have the biggest crises of our lifetime. What could be bigger than our planet? But I think we now have more, you know, technology and all this. We have we have more power to throw at it, to find the solution. It would have to be a really big obstacle given, you know, the, the armor that we've got behind us. Um, so I, I I'm just very confident that we're gonna we're gonna go through it, and I don't I don't feel anxiety because I think that basically whatever you focus on expands. Right, I'm not someone who's going to focus on what's wrong with the world. I'm going to focus on all the positives and what I can do about it. And if those thoughts come into my head, I can just switch them around. I think you have to be quite careful with your thinking, personally. I agree. And I I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah, I mean, part of the reason that I'm doing this podcast is because talking with people like you, people who are doing something about the problem, instead of just saying like, oh, we have this massive problem. It's like, well, people are being creative and they're coming up with solutions and there's so much exciting stuff happening. And so I'm so grateful that we had this time to talk today. So how can people find you, get in touch, buy your pieces, hire you to create something? Well, you know, what's interesting is that at the moment, I I don't really do that much commercially. So I just had a sale for the first time and I have a really fantastic intern who's going to set up a Depop shop to clear the decks. So we're going to, so I I think that if you follow Converted Closet, at Converted Closet on Instagram, there'll be more details of that coming up. I think increasingly, I'm going to be just making these bespoke pieces and I have some presenting (laughs) options in my future, which really gets me excited. There's nothing more exciting for me than combining, designing something with then, you know, sharing it with the world. I I just, that's like my sweet spot. So I think that that, and also I think that's probably the most powerful thing that I can do as a person to affect change is communicate the message. So I think that's what I'll focus on more of. But I will be putting some of my lovely quilt dresses and my more higher end pieces onto Instagram at some point and selling them. So keep an eye on that. 
I think Instagram's the place to be at the moment for me. Great. Amazing. I love it. Well, that's how I found you. <laughs> Good. We'll have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for chatting with us. And yeah, we'll, we'll keep in touch. <laughs> Such a pleasure. And I just want to say, you know, well done for you. For it's, it's, I think we're all in this together. And I just think it's, it's a fantastic service that you're doing by pulling people together and hearing different perspectives and sharing the love for this new movement, which will change. It will definitely change the fashion industry. So well done you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for listening to the Swap Society podcast. Swap Society is an online clothing swap for women and kids that makes it easy and affordable to mix up your wardrobe sustainably. We're a growing community of women across the USA who are creating positive change by swapping our clothes and slowing down our fashion consumption. We would love to swap with you. If you're interested in joining, you can sign up at our website. Learn more at www.swapsociety.co. That's swapsociety.co. You can find the show notes for each episode on our website. Please get in touch with us on social media too. We're on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and YouTube for the video version of this podcast at Swap Society. Music is by Joel Korlitz and yours truly. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Please help us spread the word by subscribing, leaving a rating and review, sharing on social media, or simply telling a friend. We really appreciate your support. Have a wonderful day. And remember to swap before you shop. <laughs>